Welcome to approach to shortness of breath. Your next patient is complaining of shortness of breath. His vital signs include heart rate of 120, blood pressure of 140 over 90, rest rate of 36, and an oxygen saturation of 84% in room air. You quickly recognize the patient is tachycardic, tachypnic, and hypoxic. How are you going to manage the patient in the next few minutes? As with all patients in the emergency department, our treatment starts with ABC. Airway, breathing, and circulation. We'll go through that assessment in a step-by-step -step process. Airway means making sure the patient's upper airway is patent. If you look at the cross section of the airway as shown here, you can see here's the tongue, and the upper airway is really the space from the oropharynx until it meets the trachea. Anything blocking this path will create an obstruction in the airway. How do we assess to see if the airway is patent? If the patient can speak, that means the airway is patent. Since there is a clear passage from the vocal cords all the way up. If the patient is making gurgling noise, that means the airway may not be patent. If you hear a strider, that usually means an upper airway obstruction, and therefore the airway is not patent. If the patient has a decreased GCS, the soft tissue and the muscles in the upper airway can relax to the point that they are obstructing the airway. What do we do about an obstructed airway? or a non-patent airway. First, you want to look for causes. Is it because there is vomit or blood in the mouth that's blocking? Is it from swelling from a trauma or swelling from allergic reaction? Is it because the patient's GCS is too low? We can get rid of blood and vomit by suctioning, and we can treat allergy by medication. Ultimately, if we're unable to clear the obstruction, we need to prepare the patient for intubation. After ensuring airway is patent, we then move on to ensuring the patient is oxygenating and ventilating. We want to put the patient on the monitor and give them oxygen to keep the saturation more than 90 to 92 percent. We will look for signs of respiratory distress, such as tripoding, in which the patient is supporting their upper torso in a triangular position. On inspection, we want to look at the chest, specifically for tracheal tugging, intercostal indrawing, and supraclavicular indrawing. The more signs there are, the more distress the patient is in. We would also listen for presence and absence of breath sounds. How do we fix respiratory distress? First, we give oxygen. It can be given in different ways. The most basic is the binasal cannula, typically at around 2 to 8 liters per minute. Another choice is a non-rebreather mask. This part fits over the patient's mouth and nose. There is also a special reservoir for the oxygen. If the patient is not responding to the appropriate treatment and oxygenation, more aggressive measures such as positive airway pressure by CPAP or BiPAP, if the patient is still not responding, Ultimately, they may need to be intubated with mechanical ventilation. What about circulation? The circulation for patients with shortness of breath is a little simpler. It consists of asking for two large bar IV, so 18 gauge and above, and to give fluids if the patient is hypotensive. The first set of investigation will come in the form of ECG, chest x-ray, and maybe a bedside ultrasound. If the patient is unstable, the chest x-ray should be a portable chest x-ray. Once these are done and the patient is relatively stable, we can then entertain our differential diagnosis. There are lots of differential diagnoses that give patients shortness of breath. As with all patients in the emergency department, all we want to focus on is the deadly differential diagnosis. There are lots of deadly diagnoses for shortness of breath. We divide this up into four different categories. We divide it into upper airway, the lungs, the heart, and acidosis. We will go through the differential diagnosis under each category. For upper airway, they include the things that we talked about when we we're doing our airway assessment. They include things like foreign body, 
swelling, blood, and vomit. The category for the lungs include pneumonia, pneumothorax, including tension pneumothorax, pulmonary embolus, asthma, and COPD. For cardiac causes, they include acute coronary syndrome, pulmonary edema, pericardial effusion, and tamponade. For systemic causes, acidosis will cause the patient to be tachypnic. What they're trying to do is to blow off their CO2. They include causes such as sepsis, DKA, and drugs. Deciding on the exact diagnosis will take some time, since each differential diagnosis has its own specific history and risk factor. There are, however, a few clues on physical examination that might be helpful in deciding which category. For upper airway causes, the patient will have signs of respiratory distress and strider. As we talked about before, we want to look for blood, vomit, or swelling in the oral cavity. If it's obvious, then it's most likely to be an upper airway cause. For lung causes, the patient will have respiratory distress without strider. We may hear crackles or bronchial breath sounds in pneumonia, decreased breath sounds in pneumothorax, wheezes and decreased breath sounds in asthma and COPD. For cardiac causes, in pulmonary edema, we will see pink frothy sputum and crackles in the lungs. For pericardial effusion, we may hear muffled heart sounds. In tamponade, the patients will be hypotensive. In the patients who is having shortness of breath due to acidosis, they will have tachypnea, but no signs of respiratory distress such as tracheotugging, indrawing, and tripoding. Their oxygen saturation is typically normal. In summary, we briefly introduce how to initially approach the patient with shortness of breath. We want to assess for patency of the airway. If the airway is not patent, we need to suction and perhaps intubate the patient. For B, for breathing, we discuss how to assess for respiratory distress. We talked about different ways to apply oxygen, and we discuss circulation by giving fluids if the patient is hypotensive. And we discuss the four categories of reasons that cause shortness of breath. Upper airway causes that cause strider, lung causes that have no strider but can have decreased breath sounds or crackles or wheezes, cardiac causes that can have crackles and muffled heart sounds, and acidosis which will give patients tachypnea but no signs of respiratory distress. This is a very brief overview. For each diagnosis, please refer to the detailed description on their own page. Thank you for watching.